are listening to Julia's Trucking Cafe News Hour. Hello and welcome to another episode of Julia's Trucking Cafe Trucking News Hour. I hope you've been doing great. Sorry it's taken so long to get another video out for you, but hopefully you'll enjoy this one. I have a unique treat on this episode. I have decided I'm going to try to include a video in my within my video. So hopefully you'll enjoy it and hopefully I don't get a copyright strike. So like always, I have lots of news to get to, so let's get right to it. In Maryland, troopers are cracking down on speeding semis and cars. Now this was reported back on May 5th. Like normal, I'm always playing catch up, but I'll get caught up eventually. Maryland State Police say that they, are con they were conducting enhanced patrols in response to an uptick in speeding and truck crashes. Maryland troopers say that they were conducting ongoing enforcement activities on and around the Capitol Beltway with a focus on drivers who are speeding or driving aggressively. That campaign kicked off back in April on the 26th and ended May 1st. However, troopers now say that the effort will continue for an undetermined amount of time. As part of the enforcement campaign, troopers are using directional radar and unmarked patrol cars to, quote, surprise speeding drivers who rely on apps to notify them of enforcement, end quote. So far, troopers say that they've issued nearly 200 speeding citations as part of the campaign. Troopers say that the enforcement effort was put into place after two semi-trucks crashed on the Capitol Beltway within 12 hours on April 23rd and 24th. Maryland State Police said that the both crashes had contributing factors that including speed, too great for conditions, and driver inattention. Troopers also said that since March 1st of this year, they've responded to more than 30 crashes on the Capitol Beltway involving commercial vehicles. From April 26 to May 1st, the Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division conducted 26 commercial vehicle inspections as part of the enforcement campaign. <clears throat> Excuse me, 11 trucks and three drivers were taken out of service for various violations. Troopers believe that drivers are taking advantage of lighter traffic caused by the state stay-at-home orders to speed and drive aggressively. In addition to the enforcement effort, Maryland troopers also contacted DriveWise, a commercial vehicle driver app, and requested they issue warnings to truck drivers in the area. The warning told drivers about the recent crashes and reminded them to stay alert and reduce their speed, especially during bad weather. And our next story, hundreds of truckers convoy to say goodbye to company founder suffering from cancer. The end of April, friends and employees turned out in droves to show love and respect for a trucking company founder battling cancer. Around May 1st, 300 vehicles convoyed, convoyed excuse me, past the home of Vernon Erb, ERB, 84 in Ontario, Canada, as he and his family watched from the front lawn. Erb is fighting an aggressive form of cancer. Erb founded Erb Transport in 1959 with a single dump truck. And this is one of his company trucks that he started out with and as a reefer hauler. The company now employs around 1,500 people. So let's go ahead and watch the video of the convoy in Mr. Irv's honor.
I don't know about you, but something like that video always gets me choked up. I just can't help it. So let's get back with the news. A woman distracted by a se her cell phone hits a semi and claims the life of the truck driver. Florida Highway Patrol says that distracted driving appears to be the cause of a fatal two-vehicle collision that happened May 6th in Palm Coast, Florida. According to the Highway Patrol, 18-year-old woman driving a car southbound on I-95 near mile marker 294 said that she looked at her phone and drifted from the center lane to the outer lane. Troopers say that the woman overreacted, veering from the shoulder of the interstate back to the center lane where she collided with a southbound semi-truck hauling lumber that was also in the center lane. 56-year-old Florida-based truck driver lost control, veered off the left side of I-95, rolled over, and hit the guardrail. The woman's car skidded back across southbound I-95, coming to a stop on the right shoulder. The truck driver was ejected through the windshield and died as a result of the crash. The woman survived and was taken to the hospital for treatment. The incident shut down both directions of I-95 for cleanup and investigation of the crash. But since, of course, since then, all um, lanes of I-95 were then opened. And you're going to love this one. Former trucking CEO who stranded hundreds of drivers was released from prison early due to COVID-19. Don't get upset. He's uh, still arrested. He's on house arrest. You know what I say? Boo-hoo. The former executive for the company that famously stranded hundreds of truck drivers by shutting down unexpectedly just days before Christmas, remember I reported on that, will be released from federal pen to home confinement. This is the guy that did it, that stranded everybody before Christmas. 51-year-old, now remember his name, James Douglas Peel Sticker? Former, what a name, former CEO of Tulsa-based Aero Trucking, was released from prison to home confinement amid the virus pandemic. As of May 6, 467 cases of the virus were reported at the federal prison in Fort Worth where Peel Sticker was housed. Like I said, Boo frickin' who. You didn't care about any of the drivers over Christmas while you were um, driving your Maserati. Peel Sticker will remain under home confinement until May 2021 for a whole frickin' year, really. After serving four years of a seven and a half year sentence, he still has to pay 22 million in restitution. Peel Sticker's legal team has asked for a reduction in his prison sentence multiple times in early April of 2020. He requested an outright compassionate release from prison due to the virus outbreak, but was denied. Peel Sticker pled guilty in 2015 for charges of tax fraud, tax evasion, after embezzling millions of dollars from aero trucking over the course of several years and using the money to pay for lavish personal expenses, including, but not limited to, his thousand guest wedding, a Porsche, a Bentley, and a Maserati. But everybody could go out without Christmas presents. And I don't even, I'm trying to keep the show clean, but be expletive, expletive. Because of Peel Sticker's mismanagement, Aero Trucking went out of business without warning a few days before Christmas in 2009, leaving about 900 of its 1,400 drivers stranded on the road without pay, without working fuel cards, and no way to get home. Many of the unemployed and stranded drivers only made it home for Christmas thanks to the kindness of other truck drivers. Something like that just really gets to me. And in better news, TA has reopened some of their dine-in restaurants at some locations. T 
truckers will once again be able to dine in as one of the nation's largest truck stop chains begins the process of reopening some restaurant dining rooms and Petro too. Uh, also, I should say, as of May 7th, TA has reopened select dining restaurant locations in seven states and social distancing choir requirements are starting to relax. You can view the reopened restaurant locations below. In Georgia, it's Fuddruckers, TA Commerce, and at Savannah, IHOP T at TA Jackson, Iron Skillet at Petro Atlanta, Iron Skillet at Petro Carnesville, Country Pride at TA Cartersville, Iowa, it's at Council Bluffs, Missouri is at Forestell, Joplin, Kingdom City, Petros, Montana is the TA at Laurel, Nebraska is Country Pride at Ogala, and Iron Skillet at York, Petro and York, Tennessee is the TA in Franklin, Denmark, Petro at Knoxville, and Petro at Kingston Springs, Texas is Black Bear at Petro Beaumont, Iron Skillet at Amarillo, and Iron Skillet at Petro at Weatherford. And traffic fatalities are on are declining actually, but trucking crashes are going up again. New data released by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration indicates that while overall traffic fatalities were down last year in 2019, fatal crashes involving large trucks have increased. According to May 2020 preliminary report, the National Highway Transportation Safety Alliance in the U.S. crash fatalities, 36,120 people died in motor vehicle traffic crashes in 2019. It's a decrease of 1.2% as compared to the 36,560 fatalities that were reported the year before in 2018. While overall traffic fatalities have dropped in 2019, fatalities in crashes involving at least one large truck are, project, are projected to increase by 1%, they say. Um, this data does not distinguish between commercial and privately owned trucks. It is important to note. In 2018, there was a 2.4% decrease in all motor vehicle crash fatalities from the year before 2017 but fatal crashes involving large trucks actually increased by nine-tenths of a percent. 2018 marked the first full year that ELD mandate was in effect. January 2020, the FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, announced a new study called the Large Truck Crash Casualty Factor Study, LTCCFS, that is intended to address the uptick in fatal crashes involving trucks in recent years. Quote, over the last three years, 2016 to 2018, fatal crashes involving large trucks increased 5.7%, they say. This study will help them identify factors that are contributing to the growth in fatal large truck crashes and in both injury and property damage. These factors will drive new initiatives to reduce crashes, some more regulations. So they say, end quote. These, uh, the National Highway Transportation Safety Alliance says that the May 2020 report contains early estimates on traffic fatalities and that a complete report will be released later this year in 2020. And now let's take a short break. As truck drivers, we all know what it's like to be at a shipper's or receiver's and have to wait to be loaded for hours on end. Am I right? Especially produce coolers and paper mills. That's why you need to be prepared with extra food in your truck. My Patriot Supply helps you stay prepared. Now, it's not what you may be thinking. My Patriot Supply is delicious emergency food. They have food kits that are good up to 25 years, and they come in a slim light tote that you can easily store in your food pantry or under your bunk. I could speak from experience after living through Hurricane Katrina. We were without power for 10 days, my mother, my son, and I. And if it weren't for the MREs that were flown into us, we wouldn't have had any food. Four 60-foot pine trees broke in half during that storm and landed across my driveway, landlocking me in, so I couldn't get out for food. And there were four-mile gas lines then. 
that's when my Patriot Supply emergency food would have come in real handy. If I knew then what I know now about my Patriot Supply, I would have definitely had some of this food stockpiled in my pantry. Now for limited time, you could get a one-week food supply in a handy and neat look at ammo can. And they even offer gluten-free food for just under $100. All you have to do to get yours today is go to my website at juliastruckatcafe.com, go along the toolbar, and you'll see the emergency food supply tab. Click on that, scroll down, and click on any of the images that you see to find out more information. You need to be prepared and it's important to stay well stocked in your truck. You insure your car, you buy health insurance, vision and dental. Now why not buy food insurance? Stay prepared for anything that happens. Get yours today. Go to juliastruckacafe.com, click on the emergency food supply tab and order yours. Welcome back to Julia's Truck at Cafe Truck and News Hour. Thank you so much for joining me again. Now let's get back to the news. In our top story, a North Carolina Attorney General sues a towing company for predatory booting of semi-trucks. Authorities in North Carolina are taking action against a towing company accused of booting and towing trucks hauling essential supplies during this virus. On May 5th, North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein announced that he had filed the state's first price gouging lawsuit of this virus crisis against Charlotte-based A1 Towing Solutions, Inc. and owner David Satterfield. The suit asks for a restitution for truck drivers and their companies who were affected, affected by improper towing and booting prices. Stein accuses A1 Towing and Satterfield of violating North Carolina's price gouging statute and engaging in deceptive trade practices and unfair debt collection practices during this virus emergency. The lawsuit says that A1 Towing and Satterfield, quote, improperly and predatorily, end quote, booted and towed trucks hauling food, water, bleach, or needed medical supplies in spite of the fact that truck drivers had obtained permission from owners to park. From a news release from Stein's office, I quote from the article, after towing or booting the trucks, the defendants allegedly forced drivers to pay exorbitant amounts of up to $4,400 for their release. The defendants also allegedly engaged in other illegal practices, including, but not limited to, double booting a tractor and its trailer to double the price for removing the boots, charging inflated fees for the use of a credit card and bogus fees for filings with the DMV and threatening to increase the fees for the release of the trucks unless the driver is paid immediately. These improper booting and towing actions led to the delay in the delivery of critically needed supplies, Stein says. Stein has also obtained a restraining order that prevents A1 Towing and Satterfield from towing or booting any vehicles until a court hearing. The lawsuit specifically named four truck drivers who had been improperly booted or towed by A1 Towing. In one of the cases, truck driver Mr. Caba had reportedly parked overnight at a Home Depot in Charlotte with express permission from the store manager. When he arrived at the lot just before 5 a.m. the next morning to pick up and deliver his load of medical supplies, his truck was missing from the lot. Mr. Caba later learned that his truck had been towed by A1 Towing. The company charged him $2,000 to release his truck from impound. The truck wasn't released until 4.45 p.m. that day, meaning that Cobb had lost a whole day of driving and delayed the delivery of two loads of medical supplies. Quote, as North Carolinians were waiting on critical supplies to respond to this virus, these defendants were exploiting the situation for their own profit, said Stein. Quote, any would-be price gouger should take note. My office will hold you accountable for harming people in this time of crisis, end quote. If you have been a victim of price gouging in the state of North Carolina during this pandemic, you are asked to report the incident by clicking on the link that's in this article that I'll also have on my homepage at juliastruckatcafe.com. And Love's is opening up more than 100 new truck parking spots in the South. 
On May 7th, Love's opened up a truck stop locations in Smith Station, Alabama and Walnut, Mississippi. Not that far from my house. The Smith Station store is located off of U.S. Highway 280 and the Walnut store is located off of U.S. Highway 72, like you're going to Memphis. Love's is proud to open up these two new locations for our customers in the South, said Mr. Love, the founder and executive chairman of Love's, opening our 15th and 16th locations in Alabama and Mississippi, respectively, means more customers the product, giving more customers the products and amenities they love to help them get back on the road quicker. And they promised back in January, as I reported, that they would be opening up 40 new locations this year. And in other news, trucking companies have cut more than 88,000 jobs in April. A new job report from the U.S. Department of Labor and Statistics sheds light on the stunning impact of the virus crisis on employment in the trucking industry. According to this report released by them, U.S. trucking industry cut over 88,300 jobs in the month of April, meaning that's almost 6% of the trucking industry workers lost their jobs, along with restaurant workers and a lot of other people. Total jobs in trucking fell, now this is the total jobs, 1,523,900 in March to total jobs trucking jobs to 1,435,600 in April. The transportation and warehouse industry lost a total of 584,000 jobs in April. The trucking industry job losses line up with overall U.S. job losses caused by the virus. The unemployment rate increased from 10.4% to 14.7% in April. Uh, as stay-at-home orders and mandated closure of businesses have put a stranglehold on the economy. Job losses in truck adjacent industries were also significant. Manufacturing lost 1.3 million jobs in April and construction lost 975,000 jobs. With states starting to ease stay-at-home orders and allowing businesses to reopen, there is hope that some of these job losses may only be temporary as comp companies rehire laid-off employees. I see signs all over the place at truck stops where they are wanting people to come in to work. They're hiring, hiring, hiring. My question is, why don't you rehire the people that you laid off? Good question, right? And President Trump says truckers are price gouged after DC rally. Quote, they're great people. They're people that like me, President Trump said of truckers during a phone interview with um, Fox and Friends. On May 8th, Trump appeared on the, uh, by phone via Fox and Friends and was asked to follow up on a May 3rd tweet that was issued in response to an ongoing rally involving hundreds of truckers in D.C. Trump tweeted, I'm with the truckers all the way. Thanks for the meeting at the White House with my reps from the administration. It is all going to work out well, end quote. During this phone interview, uh, Ainsley Earhart asked, everything in front of us, our paper, our water bottles, our pencils, our phones are delivered on a truck. And you tweeted about American truckers being price gouged. What are you going to do about that? End quote. Trump responded, oh, they are price gouged. In fact, they were in front of the White House. We had, must have looked like a thousand trucks. They were honking and honking, and then I actually sent representatives out. It was very funny. They were honking all day, and they're great people, and they're people that like me. They like Trump. They've got Trump all over their trucks. They're like the farmers. All they want is to be treated fairly, and we're going to treat them fairly. You know, what they're asking is almost nothing in many cases, so I sent my people out to see them. I even brought out some red hats for them, right? I said, USA strong. I kept it not so political, but you know, they're great people. They're great, great people, and they're successful. You know, they have these big, beautiful trucks, and they want them made in the USA. They're not asking for much. They want it to be treated fairly. So we're handling the truckers. We're going to take care of that. A group of truckers have been protesting in Washington to raise awareness about low freight rates and unfair brokerage practices, as well as some trucking regulations since May 1st, when they began the demonstration as a part of a larger May Day movement. And what that group was, was the, oh shoot, I forget, 
anyway, I'll, I'll read it. They're, they're in another story here in a second. So um, later on in the next couple episodes, I completely forgot which one, which group it was, but it wasn't uh, American Trucking Association. It was a different one. My bad. Anyway, on to the new, <laughs> on to some more news. To talk about putting your foot in your mouth, right? I'm not afraid to do that. Anyway, the CDC provides uh, virus guidelines specifically designed for long haul truckers. CDC recently shared an article outlining best practices for over the road truck drivers during this virus. I will not call it a pandemic, I'm sorry. Uh, what long haul truckers need to know about this virus. You could read the article in full below. I'm not gonna even take the time to know about it because of the fact it's pretty long and I'll have it in the show notes. Um, I believe I already do, so I have a link to it in the description below. So I will let you look at that for yourself. And in other news, a brokerage group association responds to Trump's allegation of price gouging for truckers. He pissed them off. Soon after President Trump appeared on Fox News, said that U.S. truckers are the victims of price gouging, one of the nation's largest third-party logistics organizations fired back. On May 8th, Trump appeared on Fox News, Fox and Friends, and told viewers via the phone that truckers are price gouged. The pre president's remarks were a direct response to a trucker protest over low freight rates and lack of broker transparency that had taken place in Washington, D.C. since May 1st, while the protest has um, that... Um, low freight rates have been going on through the pandemic. They did drop freight rates. I know plenty of people that are owner operators and I mean, prices fell, went through the floor. Uh, Trump ended his remarks on the trucker protesting by promising we're going to take care of that. Soon after the remarks, the Transportation Intermediaries Association, which I cannot pronounce that, issued a formal response denying the freight gouging uh, uh, accusations. We are disappointed to see President Trump's comments this morning in response to a question from Ainsley Earhart at Fox and Friends regarding perceived price gouging by transportation brokers during this crisis. This position could not be further from the truth. <laughs> As the president should know, real estate agents don't determine the sale price of buildings. The market does. The same is true in trucking. I'm sorry, but you take it, brokers have been taking advantage of us for years. Thank you very little. You're, of course you're going to say all this garbage because you don't want to piss all your trucking uh, brokers off. That's why. As a voice of the 3PL industry, TIA welcomes the opportunity to discuss the situation with the administration, as well as with all parties involved in a formal setting, not through completely misconstrued and misrepresented statements across social media and other channels. Yeah, we're probably freaking bleeding heart liberals too. Ain't going there. We too love the truckers. Bullshit. Our members can't survive without them, and they need our members too. No American business is doing well right now. What independent truckers need right now is across to, uh, access to federal relief funding. Yeah, just print out some more money. And President Trump should direct the SBA to take action and support them rather than pointing fingers at other American small businesses. Yeah, so you don't have to take the blame. The vast majority of which also support President Trump. <laughs> Three P PLs and transportation brokers are not price gouging. Really? Really? There is simply not enough freight to support all of the carriers. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. In this case, we simply aren't shipping much of anything, and there are too many trucks chasing too little freight. This has been further exacerbated by the Department of Transportation relaxing the hours of service regulations. Oh, now you're going to blame it on the DOT relaxing the hours of service regs. You should be hauling even twice as much freight with the uh, relaxed hours, which have created more artificial capacity in the marketplace. Oh, what a bunch of hogwash. The result is depressed rates. See, they're saying the rates have dropped, so they are being price gouged. So you just admitted it in your own damn article. And rates will remain depressed until we ship more or trucks leave the market. So see, you're lying. 
all the publicly traded 3PLs reported losses in revenue and gross margin in the first quarter. All American businesses are suffering. That is true. Picking on one segment of one industry is not the answer. Oh, <laughs> oh we're getting picked up by the president. Getting America back to work, however, is the answer. It is conscious and deliberate business decision made by independent carriers to contract and negotiate with 3PLs to move their shipper's freight. If the carrier wanted to field their own sales force, they should get 100% of the rate, and many carriers do so. No, they don't, because a lot of companies don't want to deal with carriers. They ha You have to go through a damn broker. I'm sorry, I don't like brokers. To blame 3PLs for this situation is not only irresponsible, but also reckless. Yeah, everybody's saying he's reckless. Well, you know what? If the shoe fits, that's all I have to say. Rant over. Anyway, back to the news. CVSA says two upcoming driver blitzes will go on as scheduled. The Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance may have been postponed the International Road Check Inspection Campaign indefinitely, but the agency currently has no plans to reschedule or cancel two other major enforcement efforts this summer. This year, International Road Check was planned for May 5th through the 7th, but it was postponed until sometime later this year due to the crisis. However, CVSA says there are currently no plans to cancel or postpone Operation Safe Driver Week, taking place July 12th through the 18th, or Brake Safety Week, which is scheduled for August 23rd to the 29th. During Operation Safety Week, uh, let me remind you, law enforcement agencies throughout North America patrols looking for dangerous driving behaviors from both passenger cars and commercial vehicles. These dangerous driving behaviors include, but not limited to, speeding, distracted driving, put your phone down, unsafe lane changes, um, impaired driving, and failure to obey a traffic device. Also tailgating, let's not forget that one. During last year's Operation Safe Driver Week effort, 46,752 citations were issued and 87,624 were issued to both passenger vehicle and commercial vehicles respectively. Break Safety Week 2020 is scheduled to include both August the both August 23rd to 29th enforcement effort and an additional single day unannounced inspection effort that could take place at any time throughout this year. During Brake Safety Week, inspectors perform primarily Level 4 inspections on commercial vehicles to identify out-of-adjustment brakes and brake system violations. The Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance says they will continue to monitor the crisis and announce the new dates of International Road Check and update the status for Operation Safe Driver Week and Brake Safety Week when possible. And OIDA wrote to Congress and asked for more transparency in broker transactions. So if they weren't doing anything wrong, why is OIDA getting involved then? The Owner and Operator Independent Drivers Association. They wrote to Congress asking for intervention to make sure that freight brokers are paying truck drivers fairly. For weeks now, truckers across the country have been demonstrating to raise awareness about several issues in trucking, expressing worry that their businesses will not survive the tough economic conditions brought on by this virus. Last week, President Trump even responded to a group of protesters who parked their rigs in D.C. to raise awareness about low rates and unfair broker practices during his appearance that I just reported on. Uh, in May 6th, OIDA, with a letter to Congress, tells lawmakers that independent truckers are struggling financially during this virus and that these struggles have shined a spotlight on the long-time problem of lack of transparency between brokers and carriers. In the letter, OIDA, o -O -I -D -A, asked Congress to tighten loopholes that brokers use to avoid complying with federal regulations that require them to maintain detailed records of their transactions with carriers. OID also asked Congress to require brokers to immediately provide motor carriers with an electronic copy of each transaction record once a contractual service has been completed in order to increase 
transparency. If you would like to read the full letter from OIDA, there again, it'll be in the show notes that will be listed below in the description. I want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to come back to Julia's Trucker Cafe Trucker News Hour. Please hit the subscribe button. It's completely free. I know when you see the word subscribe, everybody automatically thinks it's a membership. It's not. It's just letting you know when I put out new videos so that gives you a heads up. You don't even have to ring the bell. But if you subscribe, it helps me in the ratings to let me, you know, let other people know, hey, you know, this is a pretty good channel. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't, well, leave a comment. You know, I try to be goofy. I try to be silly. I try to be comfortable with the camera. There again, like I always say, this is completely out of my, you know, uh, wheelhouse. This is completely out of my norm to uh, be doing this kind of thing. But I'm trying to give you, my viewers and my listeners, a uh, different alternative. If you can't catch the podcast, you could come and see the video. You know, and, and see the articles for yourself to know that I'm not BSing you. Um, like I said, I worry about sharing other people's videos. I try to give them, you know, the kudos. And um, when I do, when I post a video or anything, but I worry about the copyrighted music and getting a copyright strike. Because three copyright strikes on YouTube, you're booted. So they'll take your channel down. But anyway, please subscribe. Thank you so much. Um, Please sign up for a newsletter at juliastruckercafe.com slash newsletter. And I will send you all the show notes right to your inbox. I also have a Facebook page. If you like to listen to the podcast, I am all over. There is a where else to find the podcast or the show on the website. Everything's under the cafe menu on the website at juliastruckercafe.com. So thank you so much for joining me again. And until next time... Have a blessed week. Keep the shiny side up. You have been listening to Julia's Trucker Cafe Trucking News Hour. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Take care. Have a blessed day.